so I'm going to show you how to create like an old rusty typed uh, metal effect. Uh, basically I'm just using here gold metallic paint and this uh, paint can be applied to most surfaces um, like pottery, uh, plastic, wood, other metal. So it's really good for that and it dries pretty much instantaneously so I'm just putting it over the mask. Now I'm not um, being careful to fill in all the spaces because I sort of want to uh, leave some areas that have been untouched by the gold. I find by putting gold down first it just helps with the development of the colour and you'll see uh, the reason why later. So now I'm taking my bitumen and just uh, applying it to the mask. I'm just um, I'm not too careful about applying it once again to that to every single crack and crevice, but I'm um, just painting it over. And then I'm just going to dry it. And now that it's dry, I just use the heat gun with the um, on top of it to dry it. Now I'm just taking some. Uh, uh, cadmium yellow, uh, primary blue and uh, a bit of white and mixing them, sort of blending them and just dragging them across the mask um, and I don't really know what the technique for that is but it's just yeah just in laying it down in brush strokes until I'm sort of working with the colours to try and make sure that the colours aren't too too strong or too much and as it starts to dry I'm going to start uh, wiping it with my finger so the bitumen underneath will start to rub through and also I'll start to rub back to the gold surface as well because the bitumen will re resist the gold so it can actually move so it's just a process now of just rubbing the areas back to try and tone down the green a little bit um, and it took me all of, you know, a couple of minutes to actually do this technique. And you can apply it to most services to create a really cool old metal effect. Like a, you know, a brass, not like a brass metal effect that's been there for, you know, years and years. So I'm just rubbing it and rubbing it now until I get it back to, to how I want it. And... How easy is that? Really, there's nothing to it. So, give it a go. I've done it on that little piece as well. Um, it's a cool technique. So, oh, one more thing. Um, now, what I'm doing is I'm applying a heat, the heat gun to it. Um, now, what the heat gun will do is it'll actually make the paint bubble and it'll make the bitumen bubble. So, it'll even um, make it make it look more realistic more metallic like and I'm gonna show you a close-up uh, very soon of it so that's the other thing I forgot to do that but yeah you just apply the heat gun towards the end and it just makes everything bubble and uh, gives a more authentic effect heat guns are really worth getting because you can use them for everything and as you can see see how it's sort of a little bit bubbly makes it m look more uh, metallic when you apply the heat gun at the end so that's it I just thought I'd like to share with you I'm a hoarder and I like to collect things and over the last year I've been really getting into collecting vases, old pottery vases and mostly I've started to collect uh, West German pottery that was made around the 1970s, um, mainly 1970s period. Um, I like the rawness, the, the vibrant colours and um, just the real uh, primitive effects and glazes and stuff that's got a real earthy feel to the works. So here's a selection of 
several that I own and now I got all these from second hand stores and they were cost me like next to nothing but recently I've been looking online and West German pottery is starting to you can get some decent prices for West German pottery now I wasn't like I knew anything about pottery when I first started collecting it but I started to realize some similarities between um, the style and so it just went from there and my idea was to try and pick the most ugliest vases I could find because I thought I'd really like to have a collection of really ugly vases <laughs> out of the ordinary but the more I got collecting and the more I found beauty in the ugliness so I'll show you this is what would be my favorite I guess and it's actually got like glittery type effect in the glaze on it and I just love the earthiness and the the oranges and the browns, and the, you know, the orange glaze. And um, on the bottom, it's clearly hallmarked West, West German, West Germany. Um, I don't really know what period it came from, but I'm saying the 1970s-ish, um, just because of the vibrancy of it. Uh, this one's another typical... Um, West German pottery. Um, love the rich oranges. And I use these to store my brushes or, you know, put my pencils in. I just find them just so unique. And I love that one for the greens. And that one hasn't got anything on the bottom, but I'm pretty sure that it's West German pottery. A lot of West German pottery is unmarked, but I can tell. I also collect uh, another Scandinavian brand called ceramic which has become co quite collectible and this is one of the first ones I got uh, I just like the shape of it and I've been using it as a paint put throwing my brushes in there but I shouldn't really put anything paint in there because <laughs> you know they va they're nice vases somehow um, I like the turquoise and the aquas in this one once again this one's unmarked but it's just so cool this is one I got um, yesterday, and it's a heart-shaped one to go on the wall, I guess. And it comes from Germany as well, and then it's ceramic. And it's still got the original little seal that they put on there, so I really quite like it. I remember my grandmother used to have similar things on her wall like that, but I always used to think they were disgusting. Maybe I'm getting older. And this was another one I bought the other day yesterday as well which I thought oh it's really pretty just like the shape of it and it's Danico I have no idea anything about Danico so I'm gonna have to look them up on the internet but I usually go for pottery that I find appealing to my eye that I think that's a bit unusual a bit different maybe a bit 70s in style that sort of thing so I quite like that one and there's another big one here um, which is also West German pottery what I also got at this uh, second hand store, um, I've had this for oh, about a year now, is this little Chinese or Japanese hand painted, I guess it's an ink pot, you put ink in there, but just it's all hand painted, it's amazing. It's got a huge big uh, seal on the bottom of a Japanese's. Uh, signature and stuff so I really have to look in an antiques book or something to try and find whatever whatever that symbol means but um, it's just got a pretty little scene on it and I just saw it and I just fell in love with it that oh, I love that so that's just another interest of mine that um, I like to collect bits of pottery and so yeah I thought that I'd share that with you